Are you ready? <laughs> Mentally, no. No. But logistically, yeah. Good morning, uh, Taste Hungary wine fanatics. Uh, welcome to our show. I'm Gabor. And I'm John. And it's spring here in Budapest and it's a Tuesday morning. And today we are going to focus on the Kunstag wine region. It's part of the, um, the Duna Borregio, so the Danube wine region, which comprises three very large regions, the Kunstag, the uh, Hajosbaja and the Csongrád regions. Today, all of these uh, wines are from one particular winemaker and uh, they are all made in stainless steel tank and they are all fairly easy drinking and aromatic. And um, what else do we know about the Kunstag region, John? So going back to the winemaker a little bit in conjunction with your question, I think that all of these wines kind of represent the region very, very well in terms of profile. So when we think about the Kunshag region and the wines that are being produced there, I find such amazing examples of indigenous Hungarian grapes, just like these three. And there are these styles of wines that are just young, fresh, often aromatic. And so it's definitely time to uh, start busting these out and, and stocking our fridge up for the warm weather season. And so, yeah, the Kunshag region being the largest region, not only in terms of size, but in terms of production, they're making about 50% of the wine in, in the whole country which is not a small amount. We're talking millions of bottles per year. Yeah, and like everything is different there. Many of the wineries that uh, we work with, they are family owned, yet they still own a hundred plus hectares easily. In other regions, you know, five, 10, 20 hectares the most, and then, and then that's as, as big as a family owned winery gets. Not in the Kunshag. So starting off, we have the first wine in the lineup, a grape called Irshai. Oliver, what do we know about it? Irsha is uh, indigenous to Hungary, almost exclusive to Hungary. And it uh, goes back, the story goes back to the 1920s. And uh, the, the uh, creator of the grape was Pal Kocsis. And uh, he crossed two grapes, Pozsonyi Fehér and Csaba Gyöngye, two sort of obscure grape varieties that have been, uh, have fallen into obscurity. Nevertheless, the sun rules. And Irsai Oliver is an extremely popular, one of the most popular grapes in Hungary. Uh, and once you taste it, you will ex you know, immediately understand why. What I love about this is also the story behind the name. So a lot of people think that it's the, yeah, named after the scientist who did the crossing, but actually it's named after one of his best friend's sons who was born in the same year that the grape was approved for cultivation. So yeah, it's kind of a double double celebration. You know, my grape is, is born and approved. Oh, your son is also born. So here, I'm going to name it after him. So I really imagine what the, what Oliver's life was like, you know, after 20 years. Everybody in the country knows his name and are drinking wines named after him. And they say, oh, your name is, is, is Oliver Irshaw. Yeah, that can't be a coincidence, can it? Absolutely famous name, but the, the guy who it's named after didn't do anything to earn it because he was just an infant at the time. But yeah. When we, when we drink this wine, and in fact, let's, let's drink this let's now. Let's drink it's this now. Almost 11, 11 a.m., so it's we're running late for it. Elderflower. Always, always elderflower. Always like really tart citrus. And, and definitely for me, it's usually green apple as well. These tart, sour, you know, higher acid notes, which are just perfect because you have a high acid wine with low alcohol, perfect for... You know, drink, you can drink that from noon until midnight, and it's perfect for, for making spritzers as well, wine spritzers, or what we call fritsch in Hungary. Yeah, and I, again, you know, it's, it's a spring slash summer wine, and if you go into the Hungarian countryside, uh, the main aroma you're going to be smelling is elderflowers. Absolutely. It's, it's these beautiful white, yellow flowers are all, all, over, all over the place, and this is, this is what you get. Very enjoyable wine. Uh, the one thing you need to keep in mind is that you have to chill this. You have to put it in the freezer uh, for a half an hour, maybe a little more, and then serve it ice cold. Definitely not intended for aging and uh, definitely a good substitute for people who like drinking these really floral uh, varieties, maybe like dry Riesling or maybe like Muscat Blanc, these ones that have a lot of white flower notes. It's yeah, Irshad is the perfect Hungarian uh, yeah. alternative to that. And then coming up next to it, yeah, second in the lineup, this is another crazy grape that we have, another crossing that was uh, made in the early 60s, and it's called Cersegi Fuseresh. Yeah, and interestingly, it's 
the son or daughter or child, let's call it, of Irshay. So Cersegi Füseresh, our second wine, second grape of the day, uh, was crossed in the 60s and it's the child of Irshay and R Red Traminer, so Gebrus Traminer. And um, it definitely has a bit of the elderflower, the perfuminess or from, from Irshay, but it also comes with some grassiness, uh, good acidity, uh, some vegetal notes, freshly cut grass, green apple, uh, gooseberry, stuff like that. So it always reminds me of a Sauvignon Blanc. It's, Do you agree? It, absolutely. So this, if somebody tells me I, I enjoy drinking Sauvignon Blanc, but I want to try a Hungarian variety that's a little bit comparable, go for Cersegi. Mm -hmm. And this is you know, one thing that's true about, about this wine and kind of all the wines in the Kunshad region, like the price point and the price quality ratio is amazing. You get these clean, fresh, very, very vibrant young wines for usually $5, five euros, maybe a little bit more or a little bit less, depending on the producer, but amazing. And yes, yeah, similar to Gewurztraminer and similar to Pinot Gris, you can always recognize Cersegi in the vineyard because it has this little tinge of like pinkishness on the skin. Mm -hmm. So it's also very, very uh, recently been, been popular for making some orange wines as well. Yeah. So it's, also, so yeah. it's you know, of course, an older grape varietal that's now emerging uh, and having a resurgence in the market lately. Well, so much that it is actually one of the most widely planted uh, grape varieties in, in Hungary these days. Just in the Kunshag, there are 3,000 hectares mm -hmm. and more than 4,000 all over the country. But uh, so again, thousands and thousands of bottles produced every year. Yeah, and exactly. and and because of the Kunshag, the larger scale, we get very good prices, and from the Gal Winery, also very good, very good quality. Absolutely. And then, yeah, we do have the odd one out, the rose from the lineup today, but uh, we welcome it with open arms Thank because you. that's a you're welcome. It's a wonderful, wonderful fresh wine for this season. So the grape is Cape Francoche, which is. <clears throat> It's indispensable. We wouldn't have the styles of wine that we have in the whole country without that grape. So what do we know about it? Yeah, Cape Francoche is Hungary's most common red grape variety. 40% of uh, the red grapes in Hungary are Cape Francoche. So that makes us the biggest producer of Cape Francoche in the entire world. Austria and Hungary are really the two main producers of this variety in the world. It's a very versatile grape, making any anything from a rosé all the way to heavy, ageable red wines. And on, um, on the topic of is it Austrian, is it Hungarian? This is we need to set the record straight. This is very important. So the Austrians, I feel, are, are really, really famous for it. Of course, they call it Blaufränkisch over there. And if you open up, you know, any kind of wine atlas or wine textbook, that's the name that we find it in the the Austrian German name. But although they might be more famous for it, we plant like twice as much as they do. So I just want to really, really hammer that point home about our commitment to making that grape yeah, visible yeah. in the world. I think, yeah. we're, I think we're doing a lot of good work. And the that. grape is coming originally from Western Asia, so it definitely got to Austria through Hungary. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. <laughs> you know, whenever we have, we have Austrian guests come in, I, I love to open the debate. Respectfully, <laughs> respectfully, of course. But yeah, Cake Francoche, it's also really, really important for blending. When we talk about things like, like Bicavir or the Bull's Blood, oh, yeah. um, which is you know the most famous style from Eged or from Sexad, really, really indispensable grape within Hungarian wine production. But this specific rosé, um, when we taste that, what, what are you experiencing and tasting and smelling? It's, it? it's, it's a totally dry rosé. Uh, beautiful light pink uh, color and um, I get a lot of fruitiness so it's not definitely not a sweet rosé but it's a very fruity rosé and uh, I mean red fruit like raspberry strawberry the maybe a little bit of, of, of cherry but that that's that's the main um, flavor profile for me it's you know, simple, but it absolutely works. Again, and one of those wines that you can, you know, come to a cookout or a party or whatever, and, and no one is going to complain about that. It's so easy drinking, so fresh and so likable. With that, any more notes on Kunshag? Anything else that we want to include? Uh, Kunshag is a key player in Hungary. 
just if nothing else, the pure size of the region, the, the amount of production, wine production that there is. It produces all the, the bars in Budapest. It provides the wine for fruch, or you know, easy drinking, uh, family, weekday uh, dinners. And these wines are approachable, both in terms of value and in terms of flavor. The other thing that I think is really important to mention when we talk about Kunchag is I think it's it's the best way, it's 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 like the vibe check. If you bring up a bottle of Kunchag wine and you have somebody in the group that says like, oh, I don't drink that, like I'm above that, it's it's not exciting enough, it's not mm -hmm. dynamic enough for me, I say, ah, I don't really need that kind of energy, you know? Mm -hmm. I think there's such likable wines. When you bring out a bottle of Irshai or you bring out a bottle of Cherseggi, nobody is, is expecting this very, very layered or oaky or mineral or complex wine. It means that we're here to have a good time. We're here to enjoy the moment. We're here to, you know, drink the wine that's in front of us. Nice, fresh, and just full of life. I agree. Uh, carpe diem, live for the day, enjoy the day, and cheers to that. Cheers to that. Thank enjoy you guys it. very much. Cheers.